Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are uh, rejoining our Wanderer Alpha in orbit of Saturn, as uh, it has an upcoming flyby, as you saw in uh, the last episode. We do have to make a uh, 22.3 meter per second correction, and this is going to put us on course for Enceladus. I think I got it right that time. Yeah, anyway, we're still trying to get rid of this uh, aft tank that was supposed to be our capture stage. Um, yeah, it's not going very well, but it did hold a whole lot of fuel for us and gave us uh, lots of time to make many, many, many corrections. Although this, unfortunately, is not going to be the correction that uh, completely depletes the tank. we still got about uh, 70 liters of Air Zine 50 in there and a whole lot of uh, nitrogen tetroxide. But uh, that tank was tuned for that AJ-10, which is out of ignitions, which is why we're hanging on to it and using the thrusters instead of just lighting it up. Because I forgot to uh, switch it to the 118K variant as unlimited ignitions. That one only had four. And uh, apparently we used them even before our orbital insertion here at Saturn. Anyway, uh, just fine-tuning that last little bit of the burn. We will double-check our telemetry. Uh, yeah. Still a little bit off, so I think we'll just uh, tap the key a little bit, try to get this down. There it is. Bingo. All right. Let's see where we are. Yeah, we can probably dial this in a little closer. That looks pretty good. All right. Let's uh, check our altitude. 6.2 kilometers. Right off the deck. Yeah, we're going to go for it. All right. And we'll just uh, top off... The uh, probe itself just to make sure lock its fuels make sure it's not uh, burning anything when it's not supposed to we really shouldn't have to do anything else um, for this flyby we'll just go ahead and give ourselves an alarm that's in like nine days perfect uh, we don't have anything else going on before then just a bunch of stuff building and uh, no active flights that we need to pay attention to so we will probably just uh, warp around and go ahead and get this flyby done you know, why not? Switch our focus view back here to the ship to avoid epileptic incidents as we are time warping around. Oh man, okay. Our inclination is way off. There's no way that we are going to uh, see that very outer moon there, whose name I can't remember. All right, and we'll just make our close uh, flyby here through the dust of Saturn's rings. Completely harmless, I assure you. There's absolutely nothing bad that can come from flying directly through those rings at all, ever. We certainly did not pick up a, a whole lot of rocks. See? We're fine. Oh. Alright, I meant to hit the uh, radio in command there instead on the uh, remote tech queued actions, but I hit boot. That's uh, not really going to do a whole lot other than retract our RCS booms. Uh, but no big deal. Well, well, the problem is, is that uh, we are 55 minutes from escaping Enceladus, and we have an hour and 24 minute signal delay with Earth, thanks to that pesky speed of light limitation. Well, dang it. Uh, bummer. Well, man, <laughs> I don't think the last quick save was a while ago. I guess I just overdid the time warps. Uh, that was really dumb. Yeah. Extra dumb. Not a whole lot I can do, uh, unfortunately. We're probably just going to have to set up for a second flyby at some other point. These things happen. Oh well, we'll be able to uh, get the world first and unlock that little bit of the contract, which I don't think is actually a bad thing. Uh, I just, uh, I feel really dumb. Oh well. Bummer. Well, <laughs> I guess I'll spend a couple more minutes mulling it over, thinking if there's uh, any real way I can go sneaking around this, but uh, there's no, there's no real way, way to cheat this aspect of uh, remote tech. I mean, sometimes you can get around the signal delay, or lack of avionics, or lack of connection by using MechJeb, but... Yeah, when you're actually trying to radio stuff in, not much. Alright, well, I do want to see what will happen 
if we uh, exert some breaking force here at Enceladus and use that nice overth effect, it's not going to be very strong, but this is something I've been kind of curious about and would like to learn more about uh, because I'm going to need it when I get that uh, Jovian or that uh, Ganymede lander to Jupiter. The uh, ratios in gravity between Jupiter and its moons is fairly extreme, so you're not going to get a whole lot of just straight gravity assists, but if you can optimize that overth effect to make some propulsive corrections, uh, you can actually see a pretty significant benefit. Uh, I am not going to be burning for uh, 4.9 kilometers per second. I'm probably just going to lay on the thrusters for a good duration of our time here in uh, Enceladus. Uh, sphere of influence just to see what kind of result we can get and also it will help us get rid of that stupid capture stage That's just ruining the aesthetics of the entire thing absolutely terrible <laughs> Yeah, we're uh, still 30 minutes away from that radio in of the biological sample capsule that I uh, ordered up That was really just to get a gauge on the signal delay Not much else, but we're 33 seconds from our encounter not too bad. Right, might as well enjoy the view, at the very least, if we're not going to get anything else accomplished. So we'll go ahead and open up our fuel tanks here. I probably should have locked the uh, transfer stage open. There we go. All right. And as soon as we are in the SOI, we'll start to uh, lay down on these thrusters a little bit. Get ourselves pointed at retrograde. Don't really need flight computer open for anything, so might as well just go ahead and get rid of that. All right, thrusters are firing. Man, this is a tiny, tiny little moon. This really looks like we're like time warping. It also looks like we're gonna pile into the ground. Although I am assured that's not going to happen. Our periapsis is down to 5.5. Oh boy. All right, yeah, we're good. On the way back up. Not a whole lot of uh, distinguishable surface terrain, although a lot of very good views. Just uh, nab a couple of quick screenies here. That is fantastic. Yeah, I should probably continue to run these thrusters. No big deal. Space just above Enceladus Flatlands. I do wonder, A, if there's a high space biome here. I guess I wasn't paying attention. And, uh, two, if there's more than one biome. Well, now this is interesting. Uh, we saw this at uh, Deimos. We should be well out of uh, Enceladus' sphere of influence. And we are not. Very interesting indeed. Well, Enceladus might also have the uh, Cursed Potato. Although this would be a much larger Cursed Potato. That's quite interesting, yeah, even the flight or the uh, MechJeb info window, the flight data, still has us, uh, our current biome as space just above Enceladus' flatlands. That is super interesting. Yeah. So, even if we time warp, yeah, we're just uh, holding our current telemetry, but we are still listed as over Enceladus. So our biological sample came back. Hey, we're gonna get 25 science. We might as well radio that in. Sure. Okay. Yeah, and it's uh, radioing in all legit like. This is totally not legit. <laughs> I'm gonna run the radio in command. I mean, hell. I, maybe it's just giving me a chance to make up for my stupid mistakes. <laughs> so there's no way we, we are still in Enceladus' SOI, but if it's going to uh, let me radio stuff in. Then uh, I'm totally going to. Oh, great. It's not actually radioing stuff in. Yeah, see? It didn't even try. Alright, we will just uh, keep these experiments. Store them all. Uh, let me bring up my window here. Science, thank you. Ranger Block 3 Core. And we will just transfer all of our data over there. And then uh, radio it back in. Yep, and our... Shut down command for our RCS booms has gone through, so they have now retracted. 
We'll just uh, get all of this stuff transferred over. Uh, yeah, that looks like all of it. And close that. That's very interesting. <laughs> all right, so uh, we're going to have to uh, take a quick save and then reload the game. But uh, I guess now we probably already got that one, didn't we? It should be listed on the uh, radio in command. Yeah, I wonder if this is going to like kick us out of orbit or do something weird. Anyway, the way we fixed it last time was took a quick save and then hit F9 to reload. And we were back in Mars SOI because last time this happened it was at uh, Deimos, Phobos, one of the two. We'll just enjoy the view for a little bit. Take our uh, quick save here. Did I miss it? I think I missed it. Yep, let's just go. Here we are. F9, load less quick save. Alright, and we're back. Quick save is loaded. Check a quick view of the map. Fantastic. Oh, it did not really eject us. Although I think this did have quite an effect on our uh, orbit. But it was kind of the desired path anyway, so I think we're just going to run with it. You know, hey, why not? Alright, well... Let's uh, go to review stored data. And we're going to try to radio in all that stuff that we completely, legitly collected from actually above Enceladus and not exploiting a glitch in the game to further our own means. There we go. S60 science. And excellent. It's radioing it in. 120 for a radiant scan. At no pressure will yield us another 60. Actually, yeah, we should probably be checking to make sure we're actually getting credited for these things. Another 60 for the micrometeorite, and 60 for the Geiger. Okay, looks good. That is pretty awesome. Uh, I kind of wonder if maybe we should go for it again, or how we should plot out our next flyby. Uh, we got a 1.6 degree difference with Minus. Uh, Enceladus, we are right on course, 0, 0.0. So we're just going to put a node out here and plot it around a few orbits to see... Oh, hello! Another Dion encounter. Well, that's interesting. We don't even have to do anything to get it. That is even better. All right, we'll take that. Set his target. Focus view. All right, we can tune this in a little bit. It won't be too bad. Just a couple of very tiny meters per second. Oh, other way. Oh, too much. There we go. Four kilometers off the deck. Uh, it doesn't appear to be very feature rich on the terrain, so. I think we'll just stick with that. I will probably not be able to hit it very effectively anyway. All right, so we're gonna go around and extend our booms, make sure everything here is still functioning properly. There we go, extend, extend, extend. All right, how long until uh, we get there? Well, we should let the booms extend. We can't really do anything until that happens. Okay, why did we throttle back our time warp? Oh, it's because I kept changing the target, isn't it? Double check here, yeah. There we go, alright, 40 more seconds until our boom extends. There we go, one, two, three, four. Perfect, we are, have our S-foils locked in attack position. Perfect. All right, thirteen point six meters per second uh, to correct for. In uh, about a day, we'll just uh, keep time warping around. Whoop! Oh, those were the rings of Saturn that we uh, totally legitly fly through, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Well, no big deal. Oh, yep. Got distracted. Missed it by like thirty minutes. Great. All right, well, let's just uh, see if we still can't nail this. I mean, we have to do nothing to get a crappy flyby and just a little bit to get a really good one. I know we've already been here, but I'm hoping that uh, 
if we pass by the other side here, maybe we'll get a fresh biome, which would be cool. There we go. Yeah, 14, 12, 10 kilometers. That seems reasonable and not hair splittingly difficult. All right, what we got left here? Next to nothing. We're down to 22 liters in our capture stage. Almost good enough. Uh, I'm totally not going to ditch it. All right, we're going to hit get there in less than a day, or a little more than a day, sorry. So uh, I guess we'll just hang out and do that then. And I totally will not forget to <laughs> stop the encounter well, or stop the time warp well before we get there so I can queue up actual science things that will be done actually in the SOI. All right, four hours once our encounter. 46 minutes, that's 52. We'll go for 35 seconds. Oh, that's totally going to toggle action group one and not what I wanted to do. All right, well, let me log some of these manually because I think I'm still a little bit ahead of the clock. Hopefully, hopefully not. No, toggle collectors, huh? I guess it doesn't have anything left to collect. It looks like all four of our bio samples are used up. That was silly. All right, log pressure, log rad, log temp. Uh, uh, that one's used up. Observe mystery goo. I get radi radio plasma already. Not a hundred percent. All right, let's focus in our view. Make sure that uh, four hours, forty-nine minutes, and thirteen seconds. We'll just uh, forego the seconds, change 46 to 49. And once again, I seem to have toggled action group one. Uh, <laughs> old me must not have figured that out yet, but we're still going to log them manually because, you know, hey, why the hell not? But at least our booms will re-extend again. Log magnetometer. Analyze telemetry. I think that was the one I forgot to get last time. I think I wasn't die on our very first flyby when we got here, and I kind of messed it up a bit. All right, and just to see if we can't get some high space science too. Maybe. Hmm. I think we'll be all right. All right. I don't think there is a high space biome here, so we're just going to go ahead and go for it and see what we can't sort out here. And uh, as we're going around the dark side of Dione, I think that we will need to uh, <clears throat> have these windows available to us. Maybe we'll need to transfer all uh, gathered science into the Ranger Block 3 core. Uh, high over Saturn, yep. Pulled the trigger a little too quickly on that one. Dang it. All right, well, now we're in space just above Dion's Flatlands. That was a weird little bit of loading. All right then. Yep, and uh, we will start our data collection shortly. Oh, bummer, yep. Space near, space near. So nothing biome specific queued up just yet, but you know, we'll give it a shot. Dion's Flatlands might be the big biome here. Yep, we've already got uh, get atmospheric pressure. Ha 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 ha. All right, two minutes from periapsis. Let's just add a maneuver here. Yeah, that does just extend our apogee. This, however, sh shifts us radially quite a bit, and will raise our periapsis, which is good. Biological sample. We can reset both of those. All right, let's get ourselves pointed around to retrograde. It would be nice if we could shift our periapsis something uh, a little more close to Mimus. Mimus. And maybe we'll get uh, some more useful flybys that way. It does help uh, increase our orbital period a little bit too. And we are almost done with this ridiculous capture stage. Thank goodness. I would so love to be free of this silly thing. I say maybe I should have plotted this burn a lot sooner and planned for this, and then I could have uh, 
maybe ditch that transfer stage into a collision course here. And then gone about my business without it. Wouldn't that have been nice? And down to its last little scrappy bits. It is empty. Fantastic. All right. Well, we will lock our fuels upstairs. Give the command to decouple. That's going to take uh, hours and hours and hours because I really don't think I've reset my signal delay. But at least now we can just kind of enjoy the view. Ooh, Dion's Scarred Region. Oh, I think that was the biome we got last time. Or that... No, we got Flatlands last time, certainly. I think we may have pulled some data from the Scarred Region. Not entirely sure. My memory's not that great. I'd probably use a mod like X-Science to tell me what I do and do have. But we're about seven, well, five seconds now from being able to pull any actual data here. And we're probably going to miss this biome. Just knowing my luck... On our way back up again. Bummer. Hey, look at this. We're getting some data. We're going to have to uh, keep these experiments, transmit them when we... Uh, I'm not even reading them because I can't. It doesn't do us much good. We are not in connection with Earth currently, but we will transfer them all into the Ranger Block 3 core. There we go, the multi-spectral imaging platform, the Geiger-Mueller tube, and the uh, thermometer, all transferred in. Alright, and more stuff that we don't need, we can get rid of that. Yeah, we can get rid of these tank things, we don't need to be uh, bouncing fuel around anymore. Well, thank you, Dion. We did get some useful science from you here. Super excite. I didn't think that we were going to get paid at all for this, but, you know, hey, why not? All right. Um, now that we have a connection again, we need to get this thing prepped for getting rid of this outside tank, which means anything that kind of clips into it, we should probably fold back in. It's really that goo containment pod and that uh, solar particle thing. I guess I uh, would have given the command a whole lot sooner. Goodbye, Dion. I'm sure we'll see you again. Uh, I'm going to have to start making some of these flybys a little polar so that we can adjust our inclination for a lot cheaper and get ourselves uh, down to these other moons that are slightly inclined. All right. Without the signal delay, now we'll decouple our transfer stage. Maybe it'll crash into something. And we're free. Fantastic. Insufficient avionics. We are 0 0.039 tons above our weight restriction. Because of course we are. Anyway. Uh, always something, right? Uh, well, we'll deal with that uh, when it comes time for it. I'm sure we can just burn off some thruster fuel uh, with our I, J, K, L, H, and N keys. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.